Hello everyone, my name is Brian Chapanier. Today I'll be walking you through the process of getting an animated mesh from 3D Max into Doom 3 using Durton's MD5 exporter. Uh, you can get the exporter at doom3world.org and uh, first thing I'm going to do is come up to customize and grid snap setup home grid set it at 16 set this part at 8 set this part at 8 and this just reflects better on the numbers that are used inside of Doom Editor um, with that now I'll create a cylinder start it there make it so it's in such a size and let's just see where that compares to that's a good size uh, I can make it a little thinner cut down the radius a bit come on up to this area here and right click on it turn it into an editable mesh and turn on my buttons and now I'm going to add a UV map to it with UV map on it uh, I'm going to stick a texture on that's already inside the C drive yeah, C drive textures this one's in, in one in a folder called MD5 test pick the diffuse map and then also have the editor map uh, stick it on there it is well that's not exactly the uh, UV mapping I want I want the cylindrical so there it is let's go alt W show that up smooth highlights and you can see it's got the texture on it back to wireframe now I'm gonna do is right click on that and uh, no I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna collapse all to just a single editable mesh and you can see it still has the texture and the UV mapping on it and back to the wireframe you want it in UV mapping at this stage um, now I'm going to right click on it and freeze selection and get rid of the grid in the background by pressing G and come over to create systems bones and going to be making some bones click here let go click here let go click here and I'm just following up the uh, I should have made less height sectionals, but whatever, we're on our way now. Um, with those in place, I can now just uh, select off of that by selecting nothing, right click, and unfreeze all, and select the mesh. And with the mesh selected, I now want to add a skin to it. And skin is turned on, I can now hide my buttons again and with the skin turned on I want to add bones to that skinning so select all the bones there they are and we'll select the first one and go to edit the envelopes what the envelopes are are the binding bounding boxes that contain those vertices that you see lined up here they're orange now and uh, I just want to create that as a purple so I can drag it out and you saw how they became red in, and that's just how much they're being dragged up and I already know that um, I'm going to keep these bones were created down center so it's uh, it's already lined up uh, on the center line but otherwise you want to go over and check to make sure that it's going to be grabbing all the vertices in all three dimensions go to bone 2 and uh, move to old W on the keyboard select the outside ring here it's probably an easier way but this is a new thing for me too. I just make this stuff up a few hours before you guys get it. And ladies. So if anybody knows the quick way to grab those boxes out there. There we go. Feel free to let me know. This is why I should have made less of them. But we're on our way. It's getting done. And just one more to go. That matters anyhow. Seemed to work good when I selected them over here like that. I guess, yeah, you can just select the whole thing. And uh, there we are. They're all selected. Come down to like this. Turn off edit envelopes. And uh, now we can just do some tests on the motion. Start with this top one. Looks like it's all connected. Take the next bone, it looks all connected. Take the next bone, and the next one, 
and then the last one just to see that it's nothing is left behind. That's fine. Let's save this as MD5 test. Yes, we want to replace the one I already did. This is the remake. I found a better way to create the def file. So I'm just going to go through everything again, reinforce it with myself. Okay, so we have that done. Now we can select the mesh again and we will hide selection. And we're going to now click over here and end time at 30, which creates 31 frames. And we're now going to auto key and select a bone. We'll select this bone and click there and we will rotate and we will rotate and we'll just click here, hold shift, drag a copy over and now it will go back to its original position. Now we will select the next bone, come on over here and set a position and maybe do it like that. Ooh, let's get it up like that and again we'll just select the last one, shift, hold, drag it over and it all goes back to its spot. Same with this one, click there, rotate, let's uh, rotate it forward too, rotate it back, and up, over, done, last bone, back this way, set the spot, turn it like such, turn it up, roll it over, and I don't know what it's doing there. Let's uh, try to figure that out. So, okay, that's going to be the animation for it. Let's uh, click off on the skeleton. Smooth highlights. Sh whoops. I guess we want to unhide all, and now we can see. That's what it's going to look like in game, minus the skeleton that you see. So now what we want to do is just click on the mesh and max script. This is where you've dropped the Durton uh, MD5 exporter max script into the max script script folder. Click on that, run script, MD5 export. Thank you, Durton. Export, we have 30 frames, that's all fine. Everything's been great for me so far just by default. Export, and we're going to export into C, models, map objects, MD5 and we will call it MD5 test and save that and now MD5 test this will be called anim just so you can see where it comes through save that and we are now done in 3D Max and we can head over to the C drive okay in the C drive we have the uh, textures folder that has MD5 test folder with the two TGAs we have uh, models folder which has map objects MD5 and here we have the MD5 test mesh and the MD5 atom the test one open it up what we want to do is here where it says shader default we want it to say MD5 test text and the reason I made a cylinder is because instead of just a pipe with sides is because the cylinder has three meshes so even if we had now called this MD5 test text and saved it out and went to game it would only have been the very bottom meshes that are actually touching the floor that would be textured so we want to scroll down and find the shader that's texturing the side and find the shader that is texturing the top of the cylinder call them all the same and now we can save that and head on over to here back to the materials uh, back to the C drive materials folder inside there you have MD5 test.mtr and this is where it references the MD5 test text that we just wrote in on the, the mesh file um, it doesn't the name of this file itself is not that it's inside of here where it references that so you can have multiple different textures name inside the same inside a single MTR and now we have just uh, the definition file which is right here md5 test.def inside a def folder and this is what it is it says uh, 
model MD5 test and here it just has the mesh that is being used. It has an animation called idle which is the MD5 test anim that we had and here is the uh, entity def uh, for MD5 test. It's inheriting the func animate <coughs> func animate functions and properties I should say and the model that's being used is the MD5 test and uh, this is just getting it so that it's a selectable put in place model. It's not actually running yet, it's just going to be able to if you so want and it can also be triggered. So you write this up and let's just look at it. there you go, that's what you write up and then the only thing that's left to do is uh, just create a PK4 to bring into let's call this MD5 test to bring into uh, you want to save full path info to bring it to the Doom 3 base folder. Add everything. It's got the paths that it lives in. So now we can cut this out of here and head over to the Doom 3 folder. Okay, inside the Doom 3 folder, we're inside the base folder, and we can just right click, paste, and rename this to PK4. And yes, we want to do that. And we now head into the Doom 3 editor. Okay, here we are inside the Doom 3 editor, got a small room, just have to uh, right click in here and scroll down, you will see MD5 test, there it is, and there it is inside the room itself, oh. and it's actually, if you go into the game, if you just BSP'd and went into the game right now, and uh, it would just be standing there, um, wouldn't be moving, so what we have to do now is come down to Entity, and inside Entity, we want to create a class, a key of start anim, and the only animation that is present it for this particular one, and you can have triggered animation, so hit different things, you can have an object do different motions and that. Um, uh, you want the value to be idle, because that's the name of the only animation that's present. So, add that as a key, and uh, do a BSP, and start the game so you can see it. And there it is in game, uh, working like it's supposed to. The thing about these is they're not solids, so uh, you'd have to put bounding boxes around it. Of course, uh, it's got a skeleton so you can create sectional bounding boxes and just attach them to the different, uh, different bones and uh, the bounding boxes would actually move with the skeleton as well. Um, so, uh, they also, you can attach them to movers um, and that's it. Animated meshes from uh, 3D Max into Doom 3. Um, make sure you head to Doom 3 World and get Durton's uh, MD5 exporter. And when you want some to know how to attach this, bind this to a mover and such, head to uh, 3dbuzz.com and check out Jason Busby's excellent video series. Many, many video series incredible stuff on that site. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, have fun, ladies and gentlemen.